Now another group of complications in diabetes mellitus are the microvascular complications. There can be microangiopathy, disease of the small blood vessels. And here we're talking about the level of the arterioles, the venules, and primarily the capillaries. So we're talking about microvascular disease on a microscopic level. And let's think about what happens by first of all reviewing a normal capillary. Now, as you probably know, a normal capillary is made up of a series of endothelial cells. They're squamous cells. And they form the tube of the capillaries. So a capillary is a tube of these endothelial cells. And they're individual cells. They have a nucleus, a cytoplasm, cell membrane. So these are the endothelia, endothelial vascular cells. And they don't sort of float in midair. They're all on a basement membrane to support them. So there's a basement membrane on the outside and all the capillary cells sit neatly on this basement membrane. And in health, in the physiological situation, this basement membrane is very thin. But in diabetes, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, there can be thickening of this basement membrane and it gets thicker. So it gets thickening of the basement membrane. So the basement membrane changes from being nice and thin, it thickens. And this is associated with hyperglycemia, with high blood sugar levels. The higher the sugar is, and the longer it is high for, the worse this is likely to develop. So the worst possible combination for getting this microvascular basement membrane thickening is very high blood sugar levels over long periods of time. This is why, of course, the management is so important. If you can keep the blood sugar levels down near physiological ranges, then this is way less likely to occur. But it does occur in many patients with diabetes. Basement membrane thickening. And there's, there's two effects here. The basement membrane is thickened, but it's pathological. It's an abnormal basement membrane, so it tends to be leaky. You get increased permeability of the basement membrane. And proteins, fluids and then proteins, can leak out of the capillaries, which is bad. But as well as that, the basement membrane acts as like a, a sleeve around about the capillaries. So it stops the normal expansion and contraction of the capillaries. So that's the prime pathology, and it occurs in different places. And the first one we'll think about, it's on the list here, is diabetic nephropathy. Neph, of course, is to do with the to do with the kidneys, diabetic nephropathy. Now I'm sure you're familiar with this sort of diagram, like a Bowman's capsule, leading on to the nephron. And within that we have the glomerulus, the ball of capillaries. So we have an afferent arteriole taking blood in. This goes into a network of capillaries. complex ball of capillaries and the blood will leave via the efferent arterial. So here we have the glomerulus. Now we know there's basement membrane thickening as a complication of hyperglycemia and this is what happens, the basement membranes thicken in the capillaries and because the basement membranes in the capillaries thicken they can become leaky. And this means that albumin, one of the plasma proteins, can start leaking out into the glomerular filtrate. Because normally, remember, filtration is on grounds of molecular size. Small molecules like water and amino acids can fit through into the filtrate but will be reabsorbed. Larger molecules like proteins are not supposed to be filtered out. They're supposed to be physically too big but they are filtered out because of the increased permeability that's associated with the basement membrane thickening. And this is what we can test for. We can test for the presence of microalbumin urea, 
very small amounts of albumin can be released and detected in the urine. And that's a prognostic indicator for the development of further nephropathy, unfortunately. And as time goes on, more and more protein can start leaking out. But the basement membrane thickening also means that the capillaries become hardened. And you get sclerosis of the capillaries, hardening of the capillaries, glomerular sclerosis. The glomerular becomes hardened. And as well as that, there's an excess of material, basement membrane type material and matrix material is deposited in the area of the glomerulus. So the hardening of the vessels, the deposition of this uh, material which occupies the space the glomerulus should be in, means that the kidney basically will, will stop working. And as well as that, of course, the blood supply here comes in in the afferent arterial, must go round the glomerulus to get to the efferent arteriole. And if the blood's not getting around here, then you're going to get a reduced blood supply in the efferent arteriole. And it's the efferent arteriole that supplies the rest of the tubule with its uh, blood supply. So you get ischemia of the rest of the tubule. So what are the factors in the development of diabetic nephropathy? Hyperglycemia, how high the blood sugar is, and the other big risk, risk factor is hypertension. So to prevent this, we need to keep the blood sugar levels down. And if any hypertension develops, we need to treat that. In the first instance, we'll probably treat it with an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. So basement membrane thickening, one of the manifestations, diabetic nephropathy. Now the next one we want to look at is the basement membrane thickening and the damage to the capillaries affecting the eyes. That's diabetic retinopathy.